Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, The Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we have a great unboxing mystery episode. I don't know what's in half of these boxes because I just had a few people contact me about my international forwarding service, which is something I offer to viewers outside of the US that happens to run into a guy that won't ship to them wherever they're located. I'm very familiar with shipping guitars out of the country, so it helps them get guitars that were previously unavailable to them. It gives us content for the show, so you guys are looking at some cool guitars that I wouldn't necessarily normally buy. And, you know, it supports my business at the same time. So this this one actually has an interesting story. They were trying to get this forwarded by a different company before they contacted me. Apparently they were having issues sending it out of the country. I mean, this one's only going to Canada. It's not that far away, but it is still technically an international sale. So they eventually had the forwarding company forward it to me so I can forward it to them. <laughs> oh, it's funny how sometimes things like that work out. First off, these cases, they're really cool. If you haven't seen one of these things before, they're part of the Gibson High Performance series. The only bad thing about these is they are heavily prone to scratches, nicks and dings. They were like $800 brand new if you wanted to buy them separately. But they've got these nice little latches on them. You just kind of close them shut like so. They're really good feeling. And take a look at that handle here. It's a real wooden handle. Looks like mahogany to me. So the odds of that breaking, in my opinion, are pretty low. I mean, I'm sure it's not impossible. There's also a version out there that actually has wheels on the bottom and it had like a, a handle up here. Those are pretty cool. But these are pretty much a relic of the past nowadays because they've got the new chainsaw cases. To kind of replace these, you can check out this review and demo if you want to learn more about those. But let's go ahead and see what I am forwarding off to Canada. Okay, it looks like a black Les Paul standard, but is there anything fancy about it? Yes, there is. So this is definitely from the High Performance series. Let's hope for no whammies, no headstock repairs. Everything looks okay, despite, you know, being forwarded all over to our nation. <laughs> looks like we got a couple of outlines along the nut, but all things considered, for a demo shop model, this thing's looking pretty good. Kind of like the, uh, the ebony standard that we unboxed the past couple of unboxing episodes. But what makes this one different is the fact that it has all the high performance specs. So like what I was just talking about, You've got the wider nut width on these guys with the titanium nut. And a lot of guys dog those larger necks and most players do not prefer it. But what I found, the more and more of these I get, as long as these are the only guitars you have or they're similar to other guitars that you've played, you can become adjusted to it to the point where you actually prefer it. I mean, this is a very, very slim feeling neck. Then as far as uh, other fancy attributes of this one, being a high performance, you get the, uh, kind of an all access heel joint. It's not exactly the same, but this one is very close to that. So it makes it easier to play up in the higher fret registers. But something strange <laughs> I'm noticing, the whole body is like wrong. I wonder if that's why it was in the demo shop. You know how a Les Paul normally curves in here and then gets like a bit of a belly? This one has a hump right here that you don't normally see on a Les Paul. I wonder if that's why it made it there, if that's just a weird quirky spec of these things that I did not know about. That is strange. <laughs> but of course we get all the fancy push-pull pots so you can split and direct to bridge, all that good stuff. And you get the fancy speed knobs here. I believe these were first introduced in 2014. They're a taller speed knob that's notched to kind of help you get a grip if you have sweaty hands. And oh, nice, nice. This is my first one. I'm really excited. Do you guys see what is wrong here? There's no bracket for our pick guard. This is one of those bracketless pick guard systems. So the way these things work is they have these little tabs and they stick into the side of the pickup rings. I'll show you that here in a second. It's really quite a cool invention. They still have this on the back. That way, you know, it's the actual height that it's supposed to be. But there you can see the holes on the edge of the pickup rings. That was a really clever idea. It didn't really last that long, mainly just on the high performance series as far as I understand it. But that was a way to make people happy. Some guys like pick guards on, some guys don't. And if it has the pick guard and they take it off, then they have the screw holes that they don't like. So that was their idea to make everybody happy. 
and the installation is actually fairly easy right there. Kind of cool. The only thing that's weird is not having that hole right there. I feel like they could have just left that part in there to give it the illusion that everything was all right. Today's sponsor is Truefire. They want to take your guitar playing to the next level with their new guitar course. And you can start a free 14 day all access trial now. And after that, you can upgrade your account with coupon code TROGLY100 for $100 off your annual plan. What can they offer you? Multi-camera angle video lessons and even a synchronized video tab. If all of this wasn't enough, take a look at some of the people they have teaching these lessons. The legendary Pat Martino, Leroy Parnell, Larry Carlton, even Tony Franklin if you want to learn some bass. So give it a try today, and thank you to Truefire for sponsoring today's unboxing. And now onto some additional unboxings. So this one, um, I'm a little bit confused what's in here. <laughs> I don't think it's part of my forwarding service. I know that one is because I don't remember ordering a Fender anytime soon. It's either that or somebody just sent me a Fender box with something else in it. But this one, it appears to have come from a dealer. So it must be something I ordered. <sighs> Uh-oh, I'm not allowed to unbox this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I promised you guys I would never unbox another Captain Kirk Douglas on the show. So if you're interested in a Captain Kirk Douglas, I do have a few of them. But now let's hop on over to here. This is a Fender amplifier. And I've never been happier to have one of these things because this, I think, is going to do it. This is the third Fender amp, you know, all tube hand wired stuff that I've went through. The first two, they just weren't what I was looking for. And I was only buying them because this particular one was not in stock. So I talked to Fender about it. I was like, well, when are these things gonna be in? I would really, really like this particular amp. They're like, hey, we'll take care of you, buddy. So they sent this one out to me. The wait is over. Let's get this thing out. Here it is. Which model did I finally get? It says it right on the top, but oh yes. The hand wired Deluxe Reverb. The Deluxe Reverb is like one of my favorite Fender amps. When I did my initial research on like best amps to buy for a guitar, this is one that comes up. It takes pedals really well. It's essentially the quintessential amp as far as I'm concerned. So I can finally switch over to the hand-wired version of the 64 Custom Deluxe Reverb Amp. You know, a long time ago, I actually bought a vintage one. It was in mint condition, looked almost exactly like this. And unfortunately, it got all busted up in shipping, so... <laughs> I'm much more comfortable with a reissue, to be honest, because if something goes wrong, I know the parts are going to be easy to replace, and it's not going to tank the value of the amp. So it appears I can finally retire my old deluxe reverb. This was a limited edition one that had kind of a cool like cowboy Tolex to it. It's a dark red color. I mean, that was pretty cool. And the other reason why I particularly like the deluxe reverb is it's not overly heavy. It's got two different channels on it, bright and normal, and it's only 20 watts. So it's loud, but it's not excessively loud because I used to really look up to the twin reverb, but those things are just so big, heavy, and massive. The deluxe is just like that, that perfect in-betweener right there. So thank you, Fender, for finally making this dream come true with one of these boys in stock. I can't wait to fire it up in our next review and demo. All right, we've got time for one more unboxing today. This is another one from the forwarding service. But this one, I have absolutely no idea what's in here. The only thing that kind of spoiled it was there was writing on the side that says Ice Blue Custom Shop Telly. Is that what's in here? I really don't know. But I do know the UPS guy was so excited to deliver this to my house. Like, I had never seen this driver before, but he was a guitarist and he knew, you know, how to handle guitars. Like, he was very gently picking it up, very gently walking it down the stairs of his truck, setting it down ever so gently. And if only, if only every UPS driver could be like that for expensive guitars. I believe it's going to Europe somewhere, but don't worry, I'll check my email so I'm not sending things to some random countries. 
but I think I've been waiting on this one for uh, a couple of weeks to show up or something like that. But so far, this forwarded piece appears to maybe be some sort of a Telecaster. We'll have to find out. Let's take a look. Oh, whoa. Okay. I was not expecting a relict ice blue double bound telly. Okay, let's check this thing out for a little bit. So it's not a regular telly. It says it's a Fender custom Telecaster. However, th doesn't the custom normally mean that it has like some sort of non-standard pickups? But this appears to be uh, kind of an interesting one. The aging job on fenders, maybe it's just because they've been doing it longer than Gibson. They generally look a little bit more authentic, but at the same time, most fenders tend to get more beat up than Gibson's. That's just kind of the name of the game. Whenever you see somebody playing an old fender, it generally has a bunch of wear and tear. There's a reason why people buy the relic fenders other than they just like the way that these things look. You can see all of the different stuff right here. You know, from the finish checking to the wear through of the finish to the bare wood that's been all dirtied up. But there really is a feel difference to these that also makes them feel like older guitars. So whenever somebody says, ah, I just hate relic jobs, they don't look good. Sometimes there's a little bit more to it than that. Cause yeah, some relic jobs, they don't look good. Let's see what we can do with my new deluxe reverb here. So normally on my demos, I have it about right there for the reverb. That way, it's not completely dry, but it's not wet. I mean, that's crazy, only at four. You really only need maybe two and a half, I would say. Troglodytes. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We got some cool Fender electric guitars and amps. We had a cool HP standard. Fortunately, these won't be sticking around long enough for a full review and demo, but that's all right. They just need to get to their new homes. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.